Mr. Hall of Fame referee. George, Trudy said to sit down. Hey, can we have your attention, please? Uh, we want to eat and we hope we want to talk. Thank you. The police are here. The Golden State Boxers Association, uh, one of our many successful luncheons honoring uh, famous and not so famous people in boxing. Before I turn you over to our Major League. MC John Hall. I'm going to introduce a few of the many great fighters that you have seen over the years at the Olympic, Ocean Park, the Hollywood Legion, the Forum. And I'm going to—I'll start off. And over there is Frankie Duarte. Frank. Somewhere over here is Armando the Bond Muniz. One of the founding fathers of Golden State Boxing, and the guy, if he was fighting today, would be chasing Tyson out of the ring, Willie B. Yeah. Another founding father of Golden State Boxers, a good welterweight in his time, and he's our president for life, Hugh Sublet. This fellow fought as a uh, welterweight, middleweight. He fought P uh, Willie Vaughn, uh, Charlie Green, all the top guys, and he's a solid member of our group, Petey Service. Another member, uh, he didn't fight out here too, too much. He uh, was from Buffalo. He fought Ezra Charles, among others but a, a great light heavyweight, heavyweight in his time, Paul Andrews. Oh! Lifelong friend of mine, he was uh, my, we were partners, Manny some fighters, including Manny Madrid, pretty fair lightweight. He was a great master tech, technician as a fighter, never knocked off his feet, should have been a champion, but in those days there was only one group and eight champions in the world. He was a world-class referee, great, great lightweight in his day, George Latka. He just fought everybody in his day, including uh, Bolanos, John Thomas, Willie Joyce, Johnny Bratt, beat Bratt and fought a draw with Willie Joyce. Uh, credit to boxing, uh, inducted in the World Boxing Hall of Fame last year. My good friend, Joey Barnum. They uh, call Oscar De La Hoya the Golden Boy, but he's a second uh, generation Golden Boy. The original Golden Boy is here, and I, I count him maybe as the most exciting fighter I ever watched over the years. Uh, the Golden Boy, Art Aragon. Another great fighter, he uh, came along at the wrong time. As, if he was around today, he'd be making so much money. What a courageous fighter he was, and great fights for Bella Chavez. Yeah. This uh, heavyweight I'm gonna introduce was one of Don Chargan's great promotions. Uh, he uh, fought great fights with Eddie Mason and Jerry Forey, Jory Orbeal. The youngest fighter to ever win the lightweight title and a member of uh, Golden State Boxers, uh, I believe he's here with his lovely wife, Sylvia Mondo Ramos. Another favorite fighter of uh, mine is George Raff's Rap Iron Johnson.
Oscar the man Moniz is here. But at this time, I'm going to turn the program over to John Hall. Uh, thank you kindly, John. Uh, needless to say, I'm very delighted to be here again. And if you want to know a scary feeling, a lot of these guys that he just introduced, I covered in their first profile. He's given me this script here that I don't think I'll use. Uh, I want to read you something first about the tremendous coverage that the Los Angeles Times gave this event. If I can get it out of the envelope. There's Mal Flores in morning briefing. One paragraph on Wednesday. On this day in 1974, in what was billed as the biggest matchup of two local fighters, Bobby Chacon stopped Danny Little Red Lopez in the ninth round before 16,040 at a sports arena. Each fighter went on to win the World Featherweight title. The two will be feted at a luncheon Friday in Hollywood. Now that's the most dismal piece of garbage you ever want to read. He didn't mention where, who was putting it on, or what. If Sid Zip or Paul Zimmer were still around as sports editors, they would have fired Mal on the spot. You're supposed to say a little bit about it. This fight that we're talking about was one of the top five action fights ever staged in the history of boxing in this state. It was such a tremendous fight. To get one lousy paragraph out of the times as a bit, one of the top five, I don't know, uh, Muniz and Palomino wasn't too bad. Uh, Aragon, who was sitting there and Barnum didn't qualify. They're saying, where well, San Antonio? That fight didn't make it. But we've had a lot of great action fights. Uh, but I'm really glad that Steve Springer is here today on behalf of the Times and coming boxing. He covers everything else better than boxing. But I'm delighted that he's here to see there's something more to Los Angeles boxing and Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. No, I'd like to do that away. That's Frazier's script. Give it back to him. He's got some notes about Rojas. Uh, Steve Springer just did a tremendous speech this last week on Chick Hearn and does everything tremendous, but the Times has a rule down there that you can't write a boxing story unless you mention De La Hoya or, or Mike Tyson. And uh, I think Frazier is right. Willie Bean would have taken care of him. I don't know if he could ever beat Dale Hall again. Unless he hit him in the kidneys. But what a great group here. Uh, Don sort of brushed over it all the thing. That Mal should have known. Don Chargan's the promoter in Sacramento. But Don Chargan is the best weekly, war a week matchmaker in the history of Los Angeles. He, he almost saved the Legion single handedly his last year uh, for boxing. But when he was making the weekly matches for Eileen Egan at the Olympic, he really did keep it alive. And of course, he is a promoter too. And Kaplan, who wrote three out of four of Alan Malamud's columns in the last couple of years, uh, is more than a PR guy. He created George Foreman, the second George Foreman that came back. So we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of fun people here. Uh, but I should mention Don Frazier, who did all the things that Kaplan does, did all the things Chargon does, also was regular PR, partner George Parnassus during the first golden age of boxing at, at the forum where they really did, uh, ran boxing well. Uh, athletic uh, commission executive director for a couple of years, they got worn out, and reinvented hotel boxing, has kept this group, the heart and soul of this group, uh, honoring what he calls the Blue Collar Hall of Fame. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, it's a pleasure to be here with the thing, and I guess I'm supposed to introduce uh, our two main event fighters for 26 years ago. Are you going to do Roald Rojas? Raul Rojas. I got to introduce him at the last luncheon. And, uh, and it, you going to come up here, Raul? Come on. Uh, 
So Deborah and Gil Ortega, please come up here too with Raul. We'll try to find out what he's doing. Here. Most of you will remember Raul, outstanding fighter champion from the harbor area. <laughs> I think uh, Don Sharpman put him in to win his first title back in the early 70s. Uh, Raul has had his ups and downs in the game of life. He, some people wrote him off a few years ago, but he's back. He's an active member of Golden State Boxers. But he's had great help from this couple here, Gil and Deborah Ortega. They are truly humanitarians, what they have done to help Rawl put his life together. And we're very happy to present a merit to the Ortega. We got something for Rawl, just a wonderful fighter in his day. Uh, life hasn't been too kind to him, but it's getting better. Lord, to this wonderful couple. Thank you. Hey, Rojas was another guy who saved the Olympic Auditorium one year. He fought about the main event about every other week. Uh, for a year. One of Jackie McCoy's fighters. Uh, gave me one of my great days in the history of uh, covering boxing uh, when Raul and Mondo Ramos were training at the Saddleback Inn in Santa Ana. I think I've told this story once before from the Mondo Ramos point of view on his day. And I went to meet Jackie McCoy. They had a beautiful setup there in the patio. The ring was set up and these guys were sparring, getting ready for a Coliseum doubleheader. And uh, so they're both doing their sparring, they're working. And I waited at a table with McCoy while they worked. And then after they got done, they were going in, take a shower, get dressed, come out, and go do some interviewing. So there they went, I sat with McCoy, and an hour went by. It was sort of strange. And uh, neither one of them ever showed up, never came back out. They went out the back door the other way, and went on a three-week party, and uh, that was only four weeks before the Coliseum fight. Uh, Raul isn't saying much now, but he had some great times and provided us with so many of the great thrills and uh, was just a terrific fighter. That wasn't a bad action fight too, but Rojas and Ramos finally fight, or Sugar Ramos and Mondo Ramos. Uh, we've had a lot of great action fights. Where are you, Bobby? Talk about the favorite things. I, I brought the column I wrote, my favorite, I, I wrote about I must have counted them up in 20 columns. I didn't, didn't write full columns hardly until I wrote no columns and stuff, but I did 20 on Bobby. And one of our, our good days was shortly before, yeah, it was before the Little Red fight, when he, he after his first few fights, and he bought a little ranch in Silmar, and uh, we went out there, he entertained, he was working on vintage cars then, having the time of his life, and, and do it all. We call him schoolboy Bobby then, he was in college, gonna do everything. Uh, entertained us, and uh, we named the place, renamed it the K.O. Corral, which is a little backwards of the famous deal. We had a lot of fun here. Through the years, always fought to the last drop. Maybe fought a couple of years too late, too, too long, maybe not. Had a great time. Come up here and say something. We've got a slow plaque for you, but I don't, I don't think we need, we need you. What, what are you doing there? You want to tell them what you're doing? Okay. What are you doing there? I'm training boy the boys over at Main Street number four. I'm going to find me Ken in there. I messed up so we're going to know do a better job than I did. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get tried to beat you another fight, are you? Yes, I'm not. You're going to get the seventh comeback going. I interviewed Danny Lopez. He was with Howie Steiner. We went to lunch at the old Redwood. It was two years before the Chacon fight. Seven, which made it 1972, which is quick adding. 
Uh, it was a terrific interview. Danny didn't say one word. Every question I asked, Howie answered. It was terrific. At that time, Howie, Howie didn't even say we, like a lot of fight managers. He said, I. I'm going for the Bantamweight title. At that time, there was still a Bantamweight, and we, I, he named the best Bantamweights in the world, and I asked Danny if he'd ever heard of those guys, Bud Taylor, a couple other Bantamweights, Danny said, I said, what's the here? <clears throat> They're obviously the best. We had more fun with Howie Steiner, the late Howie Steiner, get a little red ready, and though he lost, the Chacon fight in the war. They both staggered each other all night. Danny Little Red Lopez. Can you come up here? I should read you this column. I brought a witness that when Howie Steiner answered every question because a lot of the answers were really terrific. Uh, but Danny learned to talk after that, but I described what he was wearing that day. God, you look a lot sharper than you used to. You look terrific. What do you know? Not a whole lot. Uh, Sam, I, I was wondering today, coming over with my wife and my sister-in-law in the car, I said, why am I going to be on I got the shit, the crap picked out of me. <laughs> I miss the Bobby Chacon. And now I see why I'm here, and I'm so happy to see all these great fans and people I've known through the years in boxing and I'm proud to have been in the same ring with Bobby Chacon. He's a great champion and uh, God bless him. Good, good person, great fighter and I'm just proud to be here and happy to be honored by all these great fans. Joe Valverde come down and honor the construction company that I work for. Keeps me busy. My brother Larry, L.A. Sheriff, his buddies come down and see him. That's what it's all about. I'm happy with him, my, my wife. Happy drag in the car with me. That's terrific, terrific. Is there anything particular you remember about that fight? It looked like a couple of times you had Bobby ready to go before he finally made you. Both of you had your shots in that fight. As I said, really, De La Hoya wouldn't even believe it. He doesn't fight that way. But you fought that way and, and fought great all through your career. Thanks, sir. And I, uh, the one thing I remember most about Bobby is Taking the shots, just bam, bam, bam. Walk in there and nail me some more. I keep going. Tough fighter, Bobby was a great boxer, and uh, he was like a Salvador Sanchez boxer puncher. One of the greatest, Bobby is. And uh, I was proud to be in the ring with him.